Hello, it's Miss Wesley, happy to be here, and a virtual handshake to all of you for making it pretty much all the way through the Polar Coordinates and Complex Numbers Unit. Um, just a little bit of extra practice with roots of complex numbers today. A couple of problems that we skipped looking at page 19, number six for starters of the Polar Packet. Find all the sixth roots of I. Um, in the meantime, by the way, I just bought the Titanic soundtrack, but it's still sinking. Find all the six roots of one. Let's just change the subject here. Um, how would we have done this the other day? Well, we actually did do this the other day. One is a complex number, and we want to kind of use our new rules and shortcuts for finding all six, six roots of this. Um, so let's convert it to polar form first for practice. This is like saying one plus zero i. You're coming out one on the x-axis, you're going up zero. So not a lot of work put into getting that r is going to equal one, and is theta just zero? because you're on the polar axis. So another way of saying this is we want to find z sub k, which is the sixth roots, so of one plus zero i in rectangular form. And in polar form, uh, we can call that one cis zero to the one sixth power. Uh, apply the rule, raise the one to the one sixth. So the sixth root of one is one as a real number, then cis, we'll have the theta, which is zero. It'll be one six times zero plus that two k pi that goes on the inside there. So not much on the inside really either. That zero doesn't need to be there. This is otherwise known as one cosine plus i sine, one sixth of two pi k. So we'll say uh, just k pi, how about over three? And we can use that to get the count of six solutions for this question. How are we going to get those six solutions? We're going to cycle through integers, k from zero all the way up to one less than six. If we go all the way up to five, that should cover all the distinct sixth roots. All right, start with zero. Let me move myself so I can get to black. Okay. So we'll start with zero and it's z sub zero equals, what are we gonna get in polar form? One cosine plus i sine of zero, like this. This is like saying one, I'll write out the whole thing if it helps, cosine of zero plus i times the sine of zero. Here's an example of a question where we do not need to reach to a calculator. We know that the cosine of zero is just gonna be one and the sine of zero is zero. So long story short, one real answer is going to be the number one. Okay, we have five left to go. So z sub one, this will be one cosine plus i sine, and then one pi over three. So just pi over three. Think of it as one cosine of pi over three plus i times the sine of pi over three. My exact values, we're in quadrant one, pi over three, the cosine should just be a half a half plus i times square root of three over two. And we really aren't gonna be needing that one that's sitting out front. So one half plus, I'll say, i squared of three over two. Okay, all right, third answer, z sub two. Now I'm sensing a pattern. The one that hasn't mattered too much, cosine plus i sine, let's do two pi over three. We're cycling our way through those um, angles. So we'll have one, Cosine of two pi over three, so we'll get negative a half, plus i times the sine of two pi over three. The sine is positive, we're in quadrant two, so square root of three over two. So rectangular form, your next answer is negative a half, and this time plus i squared of three over two. I'm guessing you're catching on and you could guess a few more of the others. You're going up, so now we're up to three pi over three, one cis pi, nice and quadrantal. So one times the cosine of pi, what's the cosine of pi? Negative one, plus i times the sine of pi, which is zero. So negative one, a real solution. Last two are on the home stretch. One cosine plus i sine, four pi over three. One times the cosine of four pi over three, so negative a half, plus i times the sine of four pi over three, negative square root of three over two. So same answer we've been getting with both signs negative this time, i squared of three over two. Have you caught on yet that the answers are also sitting right next to me on this picture, right? We're gonna talk about this in a second too. And we've been sometimes graphing our final solutions. One cis, five pi over three, 
last one. This should have a, we're in quadrant four, so a positive cosine value of that same reference angle and a negative sine value. And we've got it. We've got the six distinct things. And we actually, on the last page in the previous lesson, we found these without being polar at all. We found these by factoring. But here's where the six fall around. This time it is the unit circle, because r is one here. Your first answer, z sub zero, is going to be the number one. This is z sub zero. Your second answer is going to be this expression, z sub one. You have z sub two as you cycle around. Here's z sub three, four and z sub 5, and z sub 6 would be redundant. You'd be back to an answer that you already knew about. Okay, last problem. Find the four fourth roots. What could be, it just seems so simple, just the number negative 16. I don't think any of these answers are going to come out real, right? Because I can't raise a real number to an even power and get back a um, negative solution. So let's see what the imaginary answers should come out looking like. Take negative 16. We always do this first. Convert it to polar form. Think of where it falls quadrantally, right? Negative 16 is like saying negative 16 plus 0i. You're over 16 in the negative direction on the x-axis, and that means you've come around. I'm going to say theta equals pi for starters here, and r should equal 16 if you were to convert. Okay, so we want z sub k to equal, um, let's write this as an r sus theta, 16 cosine plus i sine pi, and we want the four fourth roots, so we'll raise that to the one fourth power in a second. All right, uh, work your magic. Take the 16, simply raise it to the 1 fourth, you get the number 2, the fourth root of 16, the real fourth root of 16. And then you've got cosine plus i sine, the 1 fourth, sure, times pi for starters, that'll get us one answer, but to get all the answers, let's add 2k pi to that. And we'll bring the 1 fourth in to help with simplifying. 2 cosine plus i sine, pi over 4, plus k pi over 2. Okay. What k values are we interested in? We want k equals 0 up to 4. So all the integers from 0 up to, I should have said 1 less than 4, 1, 2, and 3. 0, 1, 2, and 3 should do the trick. Um, let's first go for z sub 0. So z sub 0, plug them back in. We'll get polar form first. 2 cosine plus i sine, just pi over 4. And we'll convert as we go, exact value practice. So 2 times the cosine of pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2, if we wrote that out, plus i times the sine of pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2 again. You'll see a lot of patterns in these exact value answers. The first one has positive and positive because we're in quadrant 1. Square root of 2 plus i square root of 2, 1 down. Let's go for z sub 1. 2 cosine plus i sine pi over 4 plus half pi, right, plus 1 pi over 2. So that should be um, 3 pi over 4. Add those together, and you get 2. Same values, just different signs. We're now in quadrant 2, where the cosine is negative, so negative square root of 2 over 2, but the sine of that angle is positive, so i square root of 2 over 2. So really, you can just cycle through the signs here, right? This one has a negative x value, and it's going to have a positive y value, i squared of 2. So far, so good. If we raise any of these things to the fourth, we should get negative 16 back. Let's find z sub 2 and find our theta. 2 cis, pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 2. So that's pi over 4 plus pi is what you're saying. Let's make it 5 pi over 4. And while we're at it, we're talking patterns. The last one would be pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 2. We should each time, it seems like we're adding a half pi. This will be 2 cis for that final calculation, 7 pi over 4. Just writing it a little shorter here. You could expand it out. Don't be surprised when the cosine of this and the sine of this come out to be negative. You should get a negative x value and a negative y value. And in quadrant four, positive x value, square root of two, if this gets applied and we write this out, and a negative um, y value, so minus i squared of two. These are your four, count them four solutions in rectangular form and four in polar form. If we wanted to visualize this and just kind of figure out what we found around the circle, this circle has a radius of two units. And the four solutions probably should fall one in each of the quadrants very symmetrically, which is pretty convenient. 
One reference angle is pi over 4. Here's z sub 0. Another one came out to be 3 pi over 4, so the second answer, the third answer, and the fourth answer, which is all we really needed. All right. Again, I'll say it. You're cooler than a polar bear. Talk to you soon. Enjoy the day.